Hello, Keith Rock here at VengeMachinery.org. So guys, we're back on to making this uh, new lead screw or, or compound screw, I guess, for the reed lathe for one of my YouTube viewers. And I'm way behind on this project. It seems like this thing has really stretched out a lot longer than I wanted to, but we need to go ahead and get this knocked out. Really all that's left to do is to make this uh, new screw here and I'll get you guys zoomed in close up of what it looks like. But basically, uh, we just got a piece we need to turn down. I think the bottom in here is 9 16 and it goes down where the hand wheel goes on. I have to measure that and it's got a screw on the end. And on this end, this is the screw and uh, this will be the part that will fit the, the custom new brass nut that we made uh, that has that modified square thread in it. Uh, and we've made a special cutter that we're gonna use to, to cut this with as well. So, but right now we just need to get this thing roughed out. So we're over here on the LeBlanc lathe uh, I've you put my collet chuck in for this job. Collet chucks just seem to run really true. No need to four jaw it or uh, worry about running out in a three jaw or anything like that. So uh, we're gonna reuse the collet chuck, uh, I think pretty much throughout this whole project. And uh, anyway, uh, the material, I was trying to remember, I ordered a piece of material for this. I'm pretty sure that I ordered some uh, 4140, isn't that right, chrome molly? I believe that's what this material is. Uh, it's been so long ago since I ordered it that I don't really remember exactly, but I did a little bit of research and I think that's what we came up with being the material to make this out of. Um, hopefully, I'm telling you the right um, material here. Anyway, let's get zoomed in here and we'll start making this part. So first thing we wanna do is come in here and just face this end off, uh, get a nice good surface on there. It looks like it's probably a sheared um, um, cut on there, so it's not very smooth at all. So we'll face it and I'm gonna come in and put a center drill in there where we can uh, use a center on the other end of this when we pull it out. So, and this piece of material is just slid up through the, through the uh, headstock. It's about three foot long. And uh, we're just basically gonna start working off of one end and then cut it off. A lot of times when I'm working on a part like this, you know, and I got a big piece of material to work with, I will, um, you know, I've got a long piece of material and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just work on one end. And instead of cutting the piece to length to start with. And the reason, quite honestly, guys, is if I screw up, and I screw up down here on this end, I only gotta cut off that much. And I still got the rest of the material to work with. Yeah, we hope we don't screw up, but let's face it, it happens from time to time. So in this case, I'm not gonna just start off by cutting my piece to length. I'm gonna put my whole, length in here and it's just a, it's just a little trick I have used and uh, you know 90% of the time that you don't have to worry about it but that one time that you do screw something up it's nice to have that extra material. Now let's come in here and uh, we'll touch off on this and face that out. I'm just going to feed it by hand. I could use the auto feed, but I'm just going to do this. All right, that looks good. Come in here with the center drill. be good. So the next part I want to turn will be uh, this end down here. So basically we're going to turn down a, a sh shoulder here, come in and come out. So I need it sticking out about yay far. And uh, let's see, let me loosen this up. There we go. And I'm going to just slide this out. You know, I'm just going to use this part as a reference. We want it to be out a little bit farther than the total there. It's not critical on the length, uh, but that's good. And we'll tighten it back up. And then I'm gonna come in here with a uh, live center and that will give me some nice support out on the end there and tighten everything up. Hopefully that'll stay in place. 
All right, so now we're ready to start coming here and turning this down to size. All right, we're gonna come in here, touch off. We don't need to take a whole lot off. I'm gonna do about 10 thousandths total, 5 thousandths each side. Pretty coarse uh, cut here. I'm probably gonna. I'll let this one go through. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit for the next pass. Did that clean up all the way around? I couldn't tell when it was cutting. I think it did. All right, so let's see where we're at, number one. All right, so we're, we got about 10 more thousandths to go. Uh, let me slow down this feed. From there, I did slow my feed down. It's about half of what it was. We were on 9 thousandths per revolution, and now we're on about 4.6 thousandths per revolution. So, um, yeah, that should give me a much better finish there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to come out. So the, the critical area for this is going to be down here on this end, but I, I really kind of want to see where I'm at. And again, this is not a critical measurement, but I'm just, I'm just ticky about this stuff. So we'll measure right there. And we're at... at uh, we're just a little under our, about a thousandth under our measurement, but uh, I think we're gonna be all right. So I'm just gonna let it roll. So we'll go on with it. All right, that should be a final measurement. So I'm just gonna back out so I don't go back over it. And now let's get in here and measure this. And we are within about a thousandth of where we wanted to be. Again, this isn't a critical measurement, so it's good enough. Wasn't real happy with the uh, finish that that insert was giving me, so changed out to something that's got a little bit more of a, of a round on its end. So we're going to come back in here and touch off again. It'll be 20, do about a 40 thousandths total pass, 20 from each side. And that looks like it's cutting a lot better. So uh, we'll see here in a minute. better finish and I think I can take off a lot more metal than what I was doing so let's see that's two four let's take 60 thousandths total that'll be 30 from each side I'm getting to still getting to know this lathe and really kind of learning what its capabilities are so uh, and that looks like that's taking that off easily Quick measurement on this. And we've got about 120 thousandths to go. All right, I've dialed in uh, 80 thousandths total, so it'll be 40 thousandths each side. Let's see what we got.
taking it off fine. Forming a nice chip, turning blue. It's probably just a little bit on the hot side. I'm probably going to just go back to 60,000. So I like that last pass. This is cutting just fine. The machine's handling it. But uh, that insert or whatever is just not liking it as much. So we'll go back down. is still fine a little bit rough and it's getting a little warm all right we've come back in here and uh, we've gotten down to uh, pretty close to where we want to be uh, we're within a couple of thousandths and I'm gonna let this cool down to the touch get a good measurement on it and then uh, we'll make our final pass all right we've let this cool down and I'm gonna come in here We are, we were shooting for 562, we're about 561 and a half, so we're about a thousandth under, which actually is gonna be perfect because this actually is gonna be sliding inside our, of a bushing, so uh, being just a thousandth underside should give us clearance. So uh, I'm happy with that. And uh, the original measured about 560, uh, so I'm assuming that it probably has some wear in it. So this is about a thousandth and a half larger than the original piece. So uh, I'm good with that. I think we're good to go there. So before I get out of here on this, I am gonna go back into this uh, back back here. and We're just gonna clean up that back. Shoulder, make sure it's nice and square. And that looks, that looks good. Okay, my next shoulder I need to put in here is at an inch and a quarter from the end. Uh, so I'm just gonna kinda come in here. I put a little blue magic marker on there. I got a mark now that I can see. So you can see what we're going for here. That's what the handle goes up on. And that's measuring uh, 436. So we'll come in here touch off a little lube on there I'm gonna go back to a 60 thousandths total pass Off of this. I'm only going to do 40 and we're going to sneak up on that final measurement. So, uh, shooting for 436, we're at 444. So, we got what, uh, eight thousandths to go. We're just going to dial that in. Right here. money 436 so the last little bit is we got a little 3 8 inch thread down here on the end so I need to turn that down a little bit more I've got my uh, area blued up like before that's where I need my cut to go to We've only got about 60, 70 thousandths to go here, so we're just gonna sneak up on it. We got 
got about 10, 20, 30 thousandths to go. Take another 20. So this is a 3 8 inch thread, so I want it to be a little bit undersized. Uh, that's, so we're, we're about five under there. That's perfect. That should give us clearance, so uh, that's ready to thread. Let me put uh, something on here. I'm gonna break those edges and uh, we can thread that on the end. I'm just gonna lightly break these corners. So here's the uh, hand wheel that goes on here, and I want that just kind of, yeah, that feels good. I mean, it's on there. It's snug, but it's it fits, so that's good. This will get a keyway in it. We'll put that in later, and uh, we're going to thread that on the end now to put the nut on the end. So next step here is we need to put a little uh, 3 8 inch thread down here. This is just where a little screw goes up to hold the uh, hand wheel in place. And uh, normally I would just single point this on the lathe, but I've got a little issue and uh, I've really just kind of discovered it. When I restored this LeBlanc lathe, I never put the thread dial back on and I actually need to do a little bit of work to the thread dial. And I'm gonna have to do that before I can do the next step on this, but just to go ahead and get this part done, uh, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. We're gonna just come in here with an old fashioned uh, die out of a tap and die set. And uh, we're just gonna, uh, screw, put that, that thread on there uh, with a die. So I've got my die uh, in a die stock. This is the kind that normally you would adjust this in so that it fits up on the rod to line it up. Well, I don't have really a, you know what, actually, eh, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm still gonna do it the way I have planned here. So I, I basically just close this little diaphragm down back here. This, on this one, this opens and closes so that you can slide it up onto like your stock and it kind of self guides it. And I could almost use it just on this, but I think by the time I get it threaded it, I don't know, that might work, but I still think I'm gonna do it the way I had planned. I'm just gonna dial it down, that little uh, orifice down there. And we're gonna thread up here backwards, but I'm gonna run my uh, tail stock up into that little uh, piece there and that should help line that up. I'm gonna have to feed this as I go. Um, anyway. Lots of oil when, when uh, cutting threads. Keep that tail stock up against it tight. And we're going now. I'm not gonna worry about the tail stock anymore. Hopefully I'm not in the way of the camera. All right, that's up against as far as we go. I'm gonna pull the tail stock out now and we're gonna back this back off. And that looks like it went on there pretty good. Now, one thing, you know, I, you, when you start on a tap, it's, it's gonna kinda kinda taper in there. I really want this to go all the way down. So, I, you know, it says start this side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this, uh, or die, it's not a tap, but flip this over. And uh, this is the side that's normally coming out, but uh, I can thread it up on there and I'm just basically gonna use this going here backwards with the tap now. And that should uh, help me tap it right up to that shoulder or thread it up to the shoulder. I keep saying tap, we're not tapping. I need to open that orifice up in the back. All right, so. All right, we're up against that bottom now. So that should be a good thread all the way down. So anyway, a little old school. Yes, you can use your tap and die set on the lathe. Uh, you don't see it done a lot, but it can be done. Let me go grab the nut and the little hand wheel. And let's just make sure all that's gonna work. All right, so test fit here. Hand wheel goes on. 
nut goes on. It's a little bit tight, which is fine. It's going on just fine though. Of course, this uh, hand wheel will get a key way put in, or the shaft will get a key way put in there, and that'll be keyed on there eventually, but uh, that's gonna work just fine. I think this side is done. In fact, I was just looking, I have uh, this part that goes up on here. That's a nice fit. You know, that's, that spins easily, which is what it's supposed to do in there. There's a little oil hole there, but there's not any slop in it. Uh, there's a little uh, thrust bearing that goes in here. And then the handle again, that will have a key on it. And uh, I took the nut back over there, but you can see it's all gonna go together really nicely. So anyway, uh, this side's done. All right, so we've got this in finished down here now. Uh, I've cut it to length a little bit long that we can face off on the end to get to the right length. And the next step is, is uh, this end down here pretty much all gets turned down to half inch. And that's what's gonna have our big uh, uh, left hand uh, modified square thread on there that we made our special cutter for. So before we do that though, we're gonna turn it around, uh, put it back in the collet here, and uh, we need to work on this end. Uh, I've got a just a mark down here with a Sharpie pen that's pretty close to the length. This length is not a critical measurement. Um, so we're gonna face that off kind of down to that mark and go ahead and put a center hole in here so that we'll be ready uh, to put it on the center when we send it out. So let's fire the lathe up. Uh, put it back in uh, high gear. Much better. All right, come in here, we'll face this off. Go ahead and put a centered hole back here so that we can uh, run this off of the live center. That should be plenty right there. So let's, uh, we're gonna pull this out of the collet now. We've got a nice uh, center down there. This needs to go back in, but um, for the rest of this, I don't. I could chuck it up here on this collet, but that's really not big enough. So I'm going to change collets to that 9 16 and uh, go off of there. So let me run this collet out, and we'll swap those out real quick. Here's my 2J or my 9 16 2J collet and we'll go ahead and pull that in. I had wiped that off uh, before I got over here to year, both the inside and outside. I just want to mention that because I figure somebody will call me out on it. Uh, but that was wiped clean both inside and outside. We're just going to run that all the way up to the uh, shoulder there. go that's nice and tight and it's like minimal run out down here on this end but when we put the center in there it'll straighten that up all right let's get this ready to start turning down all right here we go i've marked my shoulder down here it needs to be about 200 thousandths uh it's not a super critical measurement um this has a little boss down there uh this is starting out i think at 13 16 nominal and we gotta take it down to a half inch. So uh, anyway, we'll just start plowing down through there. So I was getting my best cut a while ago with about a 30 thousandths cut for 60 thousandths total. So we're just gonna go with that. Oops. calculated there, I think. No, that's... All right, we're gonna go with about a 
40 thousandths cut and try that. I may just be getting some chatter out here on the end because it's a little bit longer. Let's see how that cuts. better. I still may be getting a little chatter out there. We'll uh, play around with it. Anyway, we're going to whittle this down to half inch. Uh, I'll bring you guys back here in a minute. So I got this all turned down to just a little under half inch. Uh, you know, we want to have about a five thousandths undersize on that. Um, but next step here, if you look on the original, down here in this bottom, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, there's a little radius in here. And it, you notice it gives a little clearance in here where those threads are no threads. I'm needing to machine that in there. And basically this is where I'll bring my cutter in and we'll feed out because this is a left hand thread. We'll start on this end and feed out this way rather than feeding in like you normally do. So uh, I'm just cutting this clearance. Now to do that, um, I've, I dug around in my toolbox and I found a, a piece of high speed steel that has a nice radius cut on it. I went over and honed that up a little bit and uh, hopefully we should be able to get in there. Uh, according to my measurements, the inside diameter in there needs to be about three eighths of an inch uh, to give me clearance uh, for my threads. So. Uh, Anyway, let's, uh, let's see if we can get in there and get this done. So I'm gonna kind of come in here. We're hitting on this backside, so we're facing down that at the same time. I get down into the bottom. I'm just gonna form that radius down in that hole. And when it looks like it's all the way around, and I'm gonna back out, I'm gonna make a measurement, see where we're at. And we're at about 410. Uh, we need to be at 375, so we got a, got a little bit deeper we need to go. This, uh, root diameter down there is not critical. It just needs to have enough clearance for my other cutter to come in there. So it doesn't like that full cut in that radius. Form cutting several seldom does, but we're getting a decent finish in there. I still got a little bit more to go. So we're just going to get in there and get this down as deep as we need to go. I went in about 15 thousandths on my dial. Let's see where we're at now. Yeah, we're within about two thousandths. That's good enough. And uh, I think the next thing I'm gonna do here is just kind of widen that up a little bit. So I'm just gonna bring my carriage over a little bit. And we're gonna go down in there a little bit more. This shouldn't be as bad going this way. We're not making quite a full cut. And I'm just eyeballing the depth. There we go. I'm happy with that. All right, there you can see that relief in there a little bit better now. And uh, again, that'll give me room to get my cutter in there and cut out to the end. Well, I had planned on finishing this thing up in this video and going ahead and cutting the left-hand threads, but guys, um, I've run into a little roadblock and uh, I'm gonna have to take a break. So this is gonna be a wrap for this one and we'll come back with another episode and I uh, do the left-hand threading. And uh, just so you guys know, I've been on the road. I actually been out of the country for the last, last week and been back home this week and been busy with work. So it's really today is the first time I've been in the shop 
uh, in about almost two weeks. Uh, even when I got home this weekend, I wasn't home <laughs> most of the weekend because I had some other things going on. Um, so excuses, excuses, there you go. I, I just, I'm, I'm way behind on this project. I need to get this done before I head out to the Summer Bash next week. Uh, but, and we're gonna get it done this weekend. Here's my problem. Um, <laughs> when I restored this lathe, uh, I never, I never finished this last little piece, and quite honestly, I had totally forgotten about it. And this is a thread dial, and I, I wanna strip this down, take it apart, clean it up, paint it, get it back on the machine. So this is gonna probably take several hours to get done, and I'm just up against the clock to get this video edited and out to you guys. So I'm gonna get this done, probably work on this uh, over the weekend, hopefully get this uh, thread done. I'm, I'm in the short rows now. Uh, but we seems like every time I work on anything, I got to work on something else before I can finish it. And that's been my challenge in this new shop. Uh, you know, this is really the first, I guess, really full project I've done from start to finish. And like I said, every time I start on something, I realize I got to do something else first. But anyway, that's where we're at. So that's going to be a wrap. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll get back, hopefully, with the final part of this episode, threading this left hand thread uh, for you guys very soon. And with that, uh, uh, like I said, I'm headed out to the bash this coming weekend. Really looking forward to that. So hope to see some of you guys uh, out in Rancho Cucamonga, California, uh, this come weekend at Stan Zinkowski's place. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.